Welcome my friends. This over here, this machine over here is what I would consider the best bank for buck entry video editing workstation or entry creators workstation. And choosing these parts have gone through a lot of the different PC parts and trying to find the best bank for buck part for every single thing, whether it's CPU, GPU, RAM, motherboard, case, SSD, you name it. I've tried to look through loads and loads of different things. Now, I'd like to share with you every single part why I chose this one and why I think this is the best bank for buck when we're talking about entry editing workstation, as well as some of the alternatives where if you don't need some of the features, you can opt up for a lower one and then save the money on somewhere else or some recommendations where, where I would say, okay, if you're doing this, for example, or if you're editing 4K footage, 6K footage, you might wanna opt in for some more RAM or things like that. So I just wanna share everything with you, put everything on the table so you can make the decision. And I think this will be very helpful for you. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, tap that like button below. That will actually be appreciated and will make a difference. So thank you very much. So let's go through part by part why I think this is the best one and share some of my thoughts and just, you know, what I found online. By the way, if you haven't seen like the benchmarks of, of this and what this can do, then check out the other video I made about this and also the other video where I'm building this. So this is like a three part video where we're doing the benchmarks and review of this. Now this video, which is all talking about the parts and then the third one, which is just about building this so anyone can do this, the CPU. Most important thing when talking about workstation or editing PC or PC for creators, it used to be that Intel used to be like the best choice for going with workstations because they were just always ahead of the game. But in the recent years, AMD is actually better bang for buck when talking about CPUs. So let me give you an example, okay? This CPU over there is the Ryzen 3600X processor, which is a six core, 12 thread processor. It costs around 180 pounds okay this is in england if you're watching this somewhere else it will be somewhere around 175 dollars or something like that so when looking at cinebench r20 scores and comparing this with the intel i7 9700k okay which is an eight core eight thread processor really good for gaming but what about the editing performance okay so that Intel processor costs around 300 and something pounds, okay? And then our processor is 180, which is almost half the price. And single core performance on the AMD processor, 492. Single core on Intel i7 9700K is 466. So we're beating on single core performance, which AMD didn't used to do. And on multi-core performance, we have 3,895 and then Intel is 3,656. So single and multi-core performance, this is much better, which is just, you know, amazing. And that's why we went with AMD. It's just better at what we're trying to do. Now, the good thing is when upgrading up, you have a lot of different options. You have the 3700X, 3800X, 3900X. You can all put them in here. Even 3950X you can put in this motherboard and you can run like super fast processors in here. So there's a lot of upgrade options for the processors. Now, there is also like a one step below that I would say if you want to save extra $25 or so, you could go with Ryzen 3600. So without the X in the end, which is around 5% slower, but it's not 5% in the price difference. Okay. The price difference is more than 5%, but it's a little bit slower. So if you need to really, really skint yourself and and try to get like the cheapest processor, you could go with the 3600 Ryzen processor, which is also six core and 12 thread, but just the clock speeds are a little bit lower. But for this build, I think this is a little bit better option because it, it performs a bit better. If you need to, you can go lower as well. I'll leave the links for everything in the description. So definitely check out the description. You'll find loads of helpful information over there. So it depends what codec you're also working with. If you're working for Sony cameras, for example, which I'm doing, then the Sony codec is actually very, very clunky on Premiere Timeline. Even clunkier than the, like from comparing 4K Sony to 6K Blackmagic RAW, 
which is a, like a raw video. Black Magic Codec is so much more, flies through, it's much easier than the Sony one. So just so you know, if you're working on, you know, Black Magic 4K or 6K, you could easily go up with 3600 and you'll be fine as well. Another thing to note over here is that this CPU doesn't have integrated graphics, which means that you're going to need a graphics card as well for definite so that's like a most thing to have when talking about cpu also we have the cpu cooler over here now i'm going with the stock cooler over there and the stock cooler can actually run quite hot okay around some of the tests you know depends on your room temperature as well but i got like over 90 degrees if you're constantly running like renderings and things like that and you want it to be a little bit quieter you might want to like opt in for like a better cooler as well whether it's uh, you know water cooling ai or, or knocked to a cooler air cooler which is much quieter actually so i'm going to leave that in the description as well if you want to go with the knock to a cooler over here just you'll get better performance and more stable kind of cpu performance but don't get me wrong it's perfectly fine like this it works absolutely awesome i've been using this it's perfect it's just a little bit loud at times when talking about gpu there's a lot of different gpus out there there's the loads of nvidia gpus from different companies and then there's the radeon GPUs and there's so many different ones you can choose from now which one is the best one for videos editing and for creators now that's quite easy at this point always go with Nvidia when I'm making this video Nvidia graphics cards perform much better in Adobe products so if you're using Adobe or video editing things like that you're getting better performance from Nvidia graphics cards so definitely opt up for the team green kind of graphics cards also when choosing a graphics card there are like two or three things that you want to look out for First of all, you want to know how many gigabytes is the VRAM. So VRAM is like kind of graphics card memory inside there. And the recommended VRAM goes like this. If you're editing 1080p, you're okay with four gigabytes of VRAM, okay? If you're editing 4K, it's six gigabytes is recommended for VRAM. 6K is eight gigabytes of VRAM and 8K or 8K plus is 10 gigabytes and more of VRAM. Now, said that, I've used this 6GB GPU and edited 6K footage, no problem at all, okay? But it also depends on the codec, but just to stay on a safe side, this is like a recommended guideline how much VRAM you need. Second of all, the second thing you want to look out for or what you want to know on your graphics card is the CUDA cores. Now the CUDA cores, if you on Premiere Pro or any other editing software, CUDA cores are like the little cores inside that help you speed up the process for your editing programs. There's loads of different names for these, like 1650, 1660 Ti, 1660, 1660 Super, there's 2000 series so which ones are better and which ones you know are worse or because sometimes the price can be more expensive but you don't really know here's what i would recommend when going for this budget okay so this is what the lowest of the lowest uh, graphics card is what i would go for if you're still working for 1080p footage maybe a little bit of 4k then you can opt up for this one and you could save around 50 pounds which is the nvidia 16 50 card which is four gigabytes ddr5 if you actually opt up for it or buy it now they opted out that it's all now ddr6 because they run out of ddr5 when they were manufacturing this so you actually get ddr6 now just check the description whether you're getting the new version or the older version and this one has 896 cuda cores so this is the very lowest of the graphics cards i would call the next up is the 1660 which i am running over here and this one has 1408 eight CUDA cores. As you can see, it's quite a big step up in the CUDA cores and we also have two gigabytes more memory. So I think it's worth the money. It's the best bang for buck, the kind of best middle ground is the 1660 Nvidia graphics card. Now I went with the Zodak, but you can go whichever one you want. The only thing you might want to look out for is the IO on the graphics card on the back is a little bit different. Some of them have more HDMI slots. Some of them also have like a DVI slot, things like that. But I went with the cheapest one of this one because that didn't really matter for me. I could buy extra cables or I had cables lying around. So I, I went with this one. So this is what I would think is the best bang for buck. And also in my case, it fits in the red and black theme, which is if you want a faster graphics cards and maybe you're doing more like DaVinci Resolve editing or After Effects editing then you might want to opt for a better graphics card because these programs can utilize the graphics cards a bit more whereas Premiere isn't as good in doing that. 
So then like the next steps, what I would go for is the NVIDIA 1660 Ti. This is really like to compare that the 1660 is the best bang for buck because when you're looking at the Ti, it only has like 130 more cores computer cores but the price is jump is a little bit higher so it's not really the best recommendation i would go for so if you can skip the 1660 ti and go for the nvidia 2060 6 gigabyte ddr6 which is 1920 cuter cores and you can see much better jump over there in performance and things like that and then after that i would go for 2060 super which is 8 gigabytes because you're getting that eight gigabytes and you're getting a little bit more CUDA cores as well. So I think that's like kind of the steps I would go for. In fact, skip that 1660 Ti, go and go for that one. After this one, try to go for 2060 and then after that go for 2060 Super, where you get more VRAM. Now you're wondering why don't you use some used GPUs because there's like GTX 1080s or 1070s which are very very powerful GPUs and you can get for a very good price use. The thing is when doing professional work like this then at least my conscience doesn't allow me to buy things off used. For this project and this and when I'm recommending things this for you it needs to be ready to be bought off the shelf. Get this graphics card, buy it off Amazon or things like that and then you know you sort it you have some kind of warranty with this as well if you want to risk it a little bit more there's used parts like you know gtx 1070 and 1080 which you can get for a very good price but i wouldn't risk it the ram okay ram sticks over there memory how much do you need now the minimum that is recommended by adobe's premiere pro and things is 16 gigabytes which i agree with the the smallest amount you should go for 2020 is 16 gigabytes but said that i think ram is one of the first things you should upgrade when thinking about this if you can buy double the amount of ram and you'll be much better the thing is i've been monitoring my premiere pro usage recently and just seeing how much does it actually use ram and how much does it need ram in my bigger workstation i've seen premiere pro use up to 56 or 55 gigabytes of RAM, but then that was very extreme conditions as well. But I can see that Premiere wants to use a little bit more RAM these days. So if you can, 30 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes is a bit better option and it's easy to upgrade. And don't worry, you don't need to upgrade it straight away. Just use it at first and then when you find, oh, do you know what, maybe I need to upgrade it. Buy these two sticks later, easy. But let's talk about a little bit more into RAM and is it more important to get faster RAM or slower RAM? Is there a difference? So the simple answer is, in terms of your editing program, you won't see that big of a difference, okay? But now said that, there is actually a difference. The Ryzen CPUs, they love faster RAM. Over here, this motherboard and this CPU, the maximum you can go for is 3200 megahertz RAM, which I'm running over there at the moment. And this is what I'm recommending you to get as well, because it's not much more cheaper or more expensive to get that RAM. There's no point of going 3600 megahertz because it just won't be compatible. 3200 is the best one to go for. But the thing is, if you find some 3000 megahertz RAM that is so much cheaper in your shop, just go for it. You won't notice the difference that much. The big difference is that in Photoshop, for example, if you're doing photo editing, in photo editing, fast RAM can give you a bit bigger performance over there. So some of the testing that I've looked online and what other people have seen is that you could get up to 14% better performance in Photoshop when going with the faster RAM. But when we're talking about like other programs, maximum what you would see is maybe four to 5% difference in performance. So it's not really necessary, but there is a difference. So it's worth looking around if you can find the faster RAM because sometimes often they're very similar price. So check around a little bit look around on Amazon or the links what I've left in the description and then see if oh, this is a bit cheaper in my country or this is only a little bit more expensive. It's worth getting that one than just get that one if that makes sense. So 16 gigabytes minimum. I really think this is the best bank for buck RAM really. Uh, when going for this, the price for performance is quite cheap and this would be the first things I would upgrade when upgrading this PC. Get four slots of RAM in there. Storage. Okay, the OS drive. Now storage is where it's obviously different to all the people, how do they store their files and what's their workflow. But I think these favorite rocket drives are probably the best bang for buck drives when we're talking about the SSD speeds and what the price is. I went for 256 gigabytes of OS drive and you shouldn't really need a lot more unless you have a lot of different programs and 
you know, you've got the whole Adobe suit on it and maybe you're gaming a little bit, you've got some games in there as well, then up for 500 gigabytes. The interesting thing is the same drive, 500 gigabytes, when doing SSD testing and benchmarking is faster in read and write speed, especially write speed where it's more than two times faster which is a very interesting thing to notice. So definitely worth opting for 500 gigabytes if you really need that. But the thing is, you could easily get away with 256 gigabytes, even when we're talking about entry workstation. So this is completely fine with 256 gigabytes. Now, this is one of the biggest mistakes I've made. As you can see over there on this, this blue in there, don't worry, I've bought the heatsink. There's gonna be a black heatsink on the top, so it's gonna look black as well. You don't have to buy that, but I'll lift it in the description below. So if you buy any type of SSD, whether it's red or not, if it's green, you buy something of Western Digital Green and it's green SSD drive, just slot that black heating on there and it just looks all black and red. <sighs> Stealth. But at the moment, it's kind of hurting my ass because there's a bit of blue in there. So we're going to get rid of that. Don't worry, in the B-roll, you can see it's all gone. Or another option is to get completely black drives for I think Corsair was providing some over there, so I'll leave a link in the description as well, which is only a few quid more expensive, a few dollars more expensive, but you're getting a black drive instead of a blue drive over there, so if you want that, link is in the description. But yeah, I really like the Sabre Rocket drives, and I've been using them on my other PC and then another previous PC, and I just think they're really good in performance and things like that. Also, if you register the product, you can get up to five years warranty, which is pretty good as well. Now, what about some other things like Project Drive, when I'm editing my project, for example, or where I'm putting my project on? So here's some of my recommendations. I'll leave one uh, Western Digital Project Drive in the description, which is just like a cheap drive where you can put your project on and edit your project on there and then put it somewhere else as like a storage once you're done with the project. But it's very good to have a project drive and then a storage system, like a three point storage thing. But I didn't add them in this build because I don't really know what you need, okay? You could easily buy like a one terabyte hard drive because hard drives are very cheap, so I don't know how much you need. Maybe you need two terabytes, four terabytes. Now, if you're thinking about buying the hard drives and you're asking which is the best bank for buck, now I've looked at the prices and the best, like a sweet spot where you're getting the most gigabytes for your money is the four terabyte drive, okay? So I'd recommend you going with the four terabyte Seagate drive, which I'm going to leave in the description as well, if you want some extra over there. If you have any other questions about like storage or things like that, comment in the comment section below because everyone's need for storage is different. So I'll meet you in the comment section below. Motherboard. Which motherboard to buy? There's so many different ones and the smaller ones and bigger ones. And I think this one is the best one. Now, when putting all the parts together, I didn't think about the color th theme, but at, when I bought, look at the motherboard and other things, I started to realize that black and red is kind of the theme over here. And then I realized or looked around and I saw everything was black and red. So I opted for everything that was black and red. So the motherboard is black and red as well, as you can see, and it's pretty cool. So it is an ATX motherboard. It's not mini ATX and I think this is the best bank for buck where motherboard that you can we can go for. There's some from Gigabyte and things like that over there as well, but they didn't have the color theme. Okay, when looking at the other options, Aurus B450 Elite, but it's not red, it's orange. The good thing about that is that it already comes with the heatsink for the M.2 drive, which is a bit better, but it's not red and black, so I opted to get this one for pretty much the same money. And then there is the ASRock Steel Legend B450M, the same thing. It's not black and red again. It's pretty much the same price. So you could go with them if you want and whichever is cheaper, but I went with this one because it's red and black. There's a few things that are really good about this motherboard as well, is that it, there's four dim slots, okay? If you go for a smaller mini ITX motherboard, you're gonna have two dim slots, which, you know, for a beginning is all right. But if you want to upgrade, it's so easy to just buy extra DIMM slots over there and then you can still use your old TIM slots. So I think that is a very valuable thing to have four DIMM slots, so two occupied and do two free. Another thing is there is six SATA ports. Let me just take this glass off so you can see a bit better inside and what's happening over there. Inside there, as you can see, there is six SATA ports over there. So you have a lot of options to plug in hard drives or SSDs if you need when talking about storage solution on the previous topic. There is a lot of option over there, six, that's that's quite a lot. Some of them only come with two or things like that. So that is very good. Another thing is there is two full size PCIe slots over there if you need them. And then few PCIe 
mini or smaller slots over there where you can slot other things in if you have like a, you know, you need the Wi-Fi card or 10 gigabit ethernet card or things like that. So there is room for that as well. Whereas you wouldn't find that much room on the mini ITX card. And you know, if you want Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, things like that, it's easy to add them over here. There is a, a few options over there available, which is great. And when going back to the aesthetics, it is really cool because that gaming plus on the bottom over there lights up red as you can see um on some of the b-roll it is really cool everything is red also not all of the motherboard comes with like heat sinks on the chipsets so there's like one two three heat sinks which just keeps the motherboard a bit cooler i think this motherboard is the best bang for buck all the features that you need are on this and it's just very good thing to go for. So now let's talk about the PCU, the power supply unit, okay? Let me turn this around a little bit so you can see. As you can see, there is this green over here, which is gonna go off in a moment, but this green little EVGA logo over there, which is pretty cool, but you know, off it goes. So here's the backside of the case over here, okay? And as you can see over here, I've got the 650 watt power supply unit. To be honest, this is where you can probably save the most in this build, okay? You don't need 650 watt power supply. I'm gonna tell you in a moment why I went with this one, but like the minimum you would want to go with if you're using the same components is around 450 watt power supply, okay? To be safe, just go for like 500 or 550. That's like the minimum I would go for. And you don't need a modular power supply, which I went for. You could get a fully wired power supply and you could save a lot. So I'm gonna leave some options in the description below you can get less than half of the price what you get for this but the reason why i went with this evj power supply and 650 power supply is first of all it's a little bit more future proof and it's very high quality power supply okay if i opt for like a better cpu a better graphics card I could use this power supply later on as well. Also, because it's quite a small case, as you can see over here, it's all, I'm already struggling to fit all the cables over here. If I had more cables over here, I would be struggling to fit them. But because it's modular, I only plug in the cables I need. If I need some more SATA cables later, I can do them later. Now, remember I said about the storage, there's two SSD drives over here that you can slot in, okay? So there's 2.5 drives over here. Only one is included. If you want another one, you have to buy that extra, but there's option for two over here i went with this one also because there was quite a good deal on it i think there was about 20 percent off for this power supply so i was like yeah i'm buying that one okay so it's always good to look around and why i'm always buying things off amazon because if something is wrong or something doesn't really work it's very easy returns my favorite place to buy things off is amazon that's why all the links in the description are from amazon as well if I've got any problems, send it back. They don't batter an eyelid. Just the best shop to go for, my favorite one. So I recommend finding or thing, buying from things from Amazon. So that's why I went for this power supply. But remember, you don't need that. It's not really necessary to get that powerful, but I just wanted future proofing a little bit and, you know, upgrade options. It's going to serve me well. But yeah, in the description below, I'm going to leave some EVJ 500 watt power supply and Corsair 450 power supply and Seasonic. 650 but they're all like much cheaper so definitely check them out if you want to save a lot more money so the last thing is the case why did you go with this case with cases the thing is you want to go with a bit of a brand the reason for this is i made a build before and i had uh, i don't want to mention the the name but i had a case from a bit more unknown company and the thing was the screw holes weren't lining up in the end the screw holes just started over threading straight away from the motherboard and everything so what happens is halfway through the build i just took my components out and yeeted the case i just had to yeet it because it was so bad so the thing is when buying the cases you want to go for some of the brands because you want your good nice motherboards and cpus to be nicely screwed in and you want all the screw loans to line up and from this fantix case as you can see they've already thought about cable management you've got these clips that come with it very easy to cable manage everything's thought through and you're not paying that much extra for it so this case was about i think 59 pounds or something like that it's got very good features which I'm going to tell you about in a moment. But the most important thing is get like a brand case. So which brands are they? Some people might, you know, comment below and add some brands. So please do, if you know any good brands as well, just leave them in there. But my favorite ones, what I always look at is first of all, Corsair, NZXT, Fantex and Cooler Master. They're like the, the four things that you can't really go wrong with. I'm sure there's others, but these are like 
my recommendation for you, okay? That I really, really like. Also, because of our color theme, this case offers me red and black. As you can see, it's red and black everywhere. But one of the biggest things that I really, really like with a case and the aesthetics or design thing, one of the biggest things is if the power supply and the bottom thing is hidden. When you've got this covering on the top, it looks so much nicer. Now imagine if you had that fully wired power supply over there, you have all these wires lying around over there. And if you're not bothered about aesthetics, just do that, you know, no, no problem. But in this, it's such a clean look, okay? There's only hardly any cables. They're all hidden underneath there. The cables just come out. It's so much nicer, okay? And just so you know, you know, the front cover comes off over here as well. There's two fans that you can add, which I actually added. I added two more fans because they didn't come with the case. The case only comes with the back one. I just added some really cheap fans over there to get a bit more airflow going over there. This case pulls in the air from the top and from the bottom. And there's also coverings over here that you can uh, take off and then clean if you want. This just covers on the bottom over here and over here, as you can see, which actually needed a little bit of cleaning already. When building in this case, it was an absolute dream. It was so easy. You know, things come off, things, things just slot in. It just works really, really good. So with the case also, I don't know if you didn't know, you probably knew this already seen from the, from the B roll, but there is like a little LED light accent on this bit over here, which at first I was like, I didn't even know it was there. I kind of bought it and I thought it was just like a design, like a thing, but actually there's an LED over there. And even though I don't, I'm not a big fan of RGB. I think this is like this really tasty like an accent like a cherry on top or you know when you get a posh restaurant food and some of the, the chef goes with the sauce it's just one bit of that like a little splash of sauce on here over there and it's linked with the same color as the button over top over here and you can actually change the colors over here because it's rgb you can get different colors you know whatever color you want these to go and there's three different modes you can have it go solid or you can have it breathing different colors or you can have it fading different colors so there's a few you know modes you can go through easily change from this button on the top as well which it just worked plugged in it works amazing just really good case for the money there's a few variant colors available for this case if you want to check them out they're in the description or just even on amazon i could see different colors so if you don't like red and black really or you want different colors you can go for that as well but in my case it's perfect red black oh so these are my tips over here and everything of what i found out about this pc is just gorgeous i like that it's tempered glass on the side over here as well makes it even more posh and things like that the case isn't too big the case is quite small compared to you know my eatx case over there which is just massive over there so some of the things that you might want to add when building this you might not need these features you might need them if you need wi-fi you might want a wi-fi card which I'm gonna leave in the description below. I also recommend getting some extra fans over here. They're not expensive at all, and you can always reuse them or things like that. I got three fans, so I could put like another one on the top here, there if I wanted to, but I think this is good enough. Just adds a little bit more airflow to the case to help with the CPU cooler and keeps it more stable and it's hardly anything extra, so. I'll leave some extra fan options in the description below as well if you want to check them out. And like I mentioned on the storage version before, I'm gonna leave some hard drives and SSDs below what I think is like the most bang for buck what you get. So it's easy to access the hard drives. By the way, hard drives you can easily access from the front over here, pull the cover up and then boom, you can do the hard drives over here. As you can see, boom, change the hard drives over there, put them back inside two slots over there. So this is every single component in this PC and why I think you should buy these bits or these parts instead of anything else. I think this is like the best bank for buck editing workstation. First step, entry editing workstation. This is what you should be go for. Even if you have to save up a little bit, honestly, you're gonna enjoy it. This is powerful thing. Now it can easily handle some games as well. I'm not a gamer, I, I never game, so I can't give you any examples, but some guys who know this, just comment below, let them know if this could handle some games. I bet it could. So lastly, what do I have to say? Thank you very much guys for watching. I really hope this was helpful for you and helped you kind of along the path of what would be the best bank for buck editing PC out there. Like the lowest of lowest, what you can get. Workstation, six cores, that's what we want. The minimum is that and AMD provides the best one over here. Like the video, if you found it helpful, that will massively make a difference. 
leave any comment you want i'm gonna meet you in the comment section below if you have any other comments or things like that i'll meet you down there i'll speak to you soon subscribe if you haven't already and see you soon bye bye my friends